had many hundreds of wives. Hundreds and hundreds of wives. How many children do you have? I have over 42,000 children. <laughs> and not one comes to visit me. <laughs> When you are 2,000 years old, three decades or so don't mean much. Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks have been doing their 2,000-year-old man routine since the 60s. Now they have a new book and CD, The 2,000-Year-Old Man in the Year 2000. Barry Mitchell began part two of their interview with a song from the Mel Brooks movie, The Producers. New number. Germany was having trouble, what a sad, sad story. Needed a new leader to restore its former glory. Where, 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 where was he? Where could that man be? We looked around and then we found the man for you and me. Everybody. And now it's springtime for Hitler and Germany. Winter for Poland and Direct mail. It's it's a pleasure and action. It's a pleasure to see Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks. Why did it take so many years to come out with another two thousand year old man record? We I know why. I work at night and he works in the daytime. No, so we, we didn't know that people were wanted it until somebody said, just like you did but somebody who had money. Tell us about the uh, seven wonders of the world. You've seen so much. Uh, Are there more? Yes, yes. Seven? But there are only seven wonders of the world, sir. No, no. What do you you're, mean, you're no? You're leaving out there. You're leaving one of the biggest. What is that? You mean there's an eighth wonder? There certainly is. And what is that? Planet Hollywood. You consider you that? You can't leave that out because they have everything there. To me, it's as, the, it's as good as the, the Hanging Towers of Babylon. Re what are you talking The Hanging Gardens of Babylon? The you Hanging you Gardens of Babylon, with right. The... I had quite me. Well, who's hanging around the gardens? Nobody. Go to Planet Hollywood, you're going to see Sly Stallone, you're going to see Bruce Willis. They're all hanging around there. And you've got a popular guy. Have you been there? Sure, yeah. A hamburger for 9.95. Yeah. you can't beat it. I see. That's big as your head. You got started in the Catskill Mountains doing comedy. Yeah. And do you remember, uh, you had your, everyone had a song, you had an introductory song. Everybody had a song. Do you remember your song? I remember Donna Pell's song. Okay. They call me Donnie, I'm very funny, <laughs> and I am here to make you laugh and sing, whatever. Well, yours is the best. But I, mine was, uh, here I am, I'm Melvin Brooks, I've come to stop the show. Just a ham who minded looks, but, but in, in your hearts I'll grow. grow. I'll tell you jokes. I'll sing you songs, have a little nappy tune and roll along. That, 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 I'm that, out that, of my mind, <laughs> so won't you be kind and please <laughs> love Melvin Bro. Oh, thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. That's your next record. I met a girl last night. I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I met a girl. <laughs> this girl was skinny. I'm talking, I'm talking How thin How skinny here. was she? She was so thin, I took her to a restaurant. The waiter said, check your umbrella. That's no, not no, no, with no, a date, no, no, you know. No, no. Oh, wow. And Carl, you started as a serious actor. In fact, yes, you did I was Shakespeare. A, yes, I was a sh I was a straight actor. I did Shakespeare toured for about yes. uh, a whole season with four plays. He was auditioned by a very important Shakespearean actor. Oh well, no, th this is. And he thought is, that the actor well, had a manner that was well, well, very commanding. Yes, to tell, here's the story. This, the guy's name was this Harold is Selman. It's the same time I forgot my lines and I double talked my lines, but this time. The actor saw something in me, and I didn't know. He was a fine actor. He was now the manager of the company. He wasn't acting. His brother was the actor. But he was the big actor, but he had a stroke. And I was 18 years old, and I didn't know that. What did you think? You thought it was like a I mannerism? Said, no, he, said, and he said to me, say off to me, because he wanted to hear my accent, my uh, British accent. Say off to me. And his hand trembled. He says, now is the winter of our discontent. Make glorious summer by the son of York. So I swear to God, I, was, I thought he wanted me to do that. I didn't know he had a stroke, and he wanted me to say, make glorious summer by the son of York. So I said, and he's a foot away from me. I said, now is the winter of our discontent. Make glorious summer by the son of York. And he just looked at me, and, and he didn't say a word, and he walked away. Oh, he says, very good. He did say very good, and he walked away. And I didn't realize until my friend said, you were making fun of a man with a stroke? I said, he had a stroke? I thought he wanted to be Richard with the hump. I thought, who knows, he wanted me to play something. Anyway, it's a true story. I love that story.
Panic situations bring out the best in you. No question. Saying, we are. Uh, did you say something like that? My, my, about, my, uh, about I said it books. because of him. I yes. say he always chases me into a corner. Tell he us. always demands no, the truth. But, but, Is it the truth? How do you know Moses? How do you know Moses a part of the death? How do you know? I'm panicked. I'm scared. And finally, you know, like a trapped rat, I spring at him with with anger and passion, and I come up. Usually, come up with well, something. Well, the thing funny. is, I, that's why I discovered that a, a fine comic mind in panic, there's nothing better, because he will save himself, the, the, the mind will allow him to save himself. Have yes. the two of you been invited to the White House for a coffee with the President? No, we haven't. No, we've been... We, I would like to go, because I hear they got some coffee there. I hear they have good Everybody coffee. loves that coffee. They run like thieves to go to that, just for the coffee. That's what they're there. They don't know, they think they're going to give money. I'll bet the 2,000-year-old man, in his many, many lives, has slept in the Lincoln bedroom and didn't have to pay any donations. I slept in the Lincoln bedroom in Illinois before he was president. <laughs> the how real Lincoln bedroom. How did you get in there? Well, it was empty. I didn't know it was his place. Oh, I see. He had already gone to the White House. I, I saw a cabin in the woods. I see. In Springfield. And I was uh, very tired. I came in there and I saw just a candle a Bible and a corned beef sandwich. <laughs> That's all that was there. What was the, the corned beef? How did the corned beef sandwich? Uh, Lincoln loved corned beef. Uh, was he Jewish? I think so. His name, first name was Abe. Abe. That's right. So, That's a very. And he was shot in the temple. Yeah. But you know, folks, yeah, shot in the temple. <laughs> shot in the temple. Barry. Ladies and merits. gentlemen, yeah. Mel Brooks, Carl Reiner. Thanks so much. Thanks, Ben. You, you lucky people, you're watching World News Now. Fairly good interview. He's a very good yeah, interview. Yeah. He's an entertaining yeah. interviewer.